On today's episode of Redefine, we talked to iconic portrait artist Art Stryber. We were fortunate enough to catch up with him while he was prepping for a photo shoot for Town & Country Magazine at Industria Super Studios in New York City. Art tells us about how making a name for yourself is more of a marathon than a sprint. And even though his portfolio is a veritable who's who of Hollywood and beyond, what his number one dream job would be. Special thanks to our sponsors, Adorama and T1 Line. Thank you for joining us on Redefine. We are here today with the Art Striver. Thank you so much out of your crazy busy schedule for Absolutely. sitting down. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Tell us what we're interrupting here today. Uh, we are in New York City. We're at Industria Super Studio um, in the West Village, and uh, we've got a shoot for Town and Country Magazine with uh, comedian author Allie Wentworth. And Allie is going to be arriving, I believe, in about an hour. And how many people do you usually engage in a shoot like this, for instance? Um, I will have uh, usually three assistants because okay. I'm a big believer in <clears throat> manpower. Um, or woman power. And by that I mean person power. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I have a digital tech. Uh -huh. And depending on the shoot, there could be, in addition, um, hair, makeup, stylist, art department, somebody from the magazine, a producer. Um, we were in Malibu on a shoot yesterday and there was none of that. It was just me and my crew. Today, we've got a manicurist and we've got a set designer and an assistant and uh, a fashion editor and an assistant. So, it depends. Yes. I've just come to the realization lately that <clears throat> it's really about time. Yes. <laughs> How yes. much time we get to do what we need to do. Right, which is why you're so exacting. I, I kind of have to be, otherwise yeah. I, can't, I can't wrap my head around it. You are, um, when you're conveying these stories and expressing kind of everything involved, it, uh, as, as an outsider listening to your experiences, you are doing the work that so many people would be just clawing at to be able to have an We're opportunity to do. We're incredibly fortunate. Yes, so when you, when you look at everything, and obviously there's also a lot of demands and a lot of pressure on you, um, people who are begging to be even close to where you are, what advice do you have for them? What kind of uh, feedback, when you look back on what you did right to get to where you are, which is an iconic position? Um, <clears throat> my advice list is just way too long, <laughs> but I will, tick, I will tick off a couple of- Top 400. I will, I will narrow it down to, I'll give you 380. Um, <laughs> uh, and, I, and, and this is in no particular order because I'm, just coming up with these as, I, as I'm thinking about it right now. But um, first and foremost, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I sat down with a photo assistant a friend of mine last year, and he wanted to show me his work. And he said, um, I said, OK, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to do what you do. And I said, awesome. I'm 48. You're 24. You're exactly half my age. You already know 80% more than I knew at 24 because you've been on not just my sets but other people's sets. But this is, your, you're gonna climb like this. It's not a total, it's not a ramp up. Yeah. And, and that, that ramp up thing will happen. There will be some shining star that will come out of nowhere and everybody will think that he or she is the newest, hottest, latest, greatest thing and that happens <clears throat> once every two years, five years. But for the rest of us, it's a slow build. And once you understand that it's a slow build, then you realize that <clears throat> you have to um, be completely committed mm -hmm. to that climb. I've broken down uh, my freelance photography business, the freelance photography business, into four categories or aspects. Number one is production, your shoots. Mm -hmm. Number two is archive. Number three is marketing. And number four is your finances and paying your bills. Right. And you have to maintain and attack and massage all four of those all the time. And if you don't, it's to your own detriment, which is to say that you have to be shooting, mm -hmm. you have to maintain your archive, you have to market yourself, and you have to pay your bills and realize your income and your outflow. Um, <clears throat> if you let any one of those four things suffer, you will not 
take yourself proverbially, proverbially to the next level. And you have to realize when you are moving to the next level. And the way you realize that is that you kind of, you have to be aware of how you're working and decide, you know what? I'm gonna take my desk out of my bedroom, which I did. <laughs> that, was, that was a thing? 20 years ago. And then when my wife and I bought a house, I said, I don't want an office in the house. I want, uh, you know, a separate office space over the garage, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna hire a studio manager. So it's more or, and more investing. Well, not necessarily. It could be a different workflow. Like, I'm going to teach myself how to use these lights. You know, it's taking yourself to another place and another level. It's working differently. Yeah. It could be investing. And, well, investing in, in terms of you yes. and your career. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's your not necessarily financial, but it, yes, right. it's investing in you. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, then there is, uh, if you want to do editorial magazine stuff, you have to live at the newsstand. You have to live um, on spd.org. You have to live on the media industry newsletter um, and understand the magazine business and know where all of the different players are at any given moment. Who's moving where and who's the art director now and who uh, was just hired at X Magazine. And you have to market yourself like crazy, not just to the design director and the creative director and the director of photography, but you have to um, dedicate yourself to marketing to the associate photo editor, the assistant photo editor, the deputy photo mm. editor, because those people are going to be photo editors someday. Yes. And they appreciate hearing from you. So you have to go to the newsstand every week and understand how the newsstand works. Now more than ever, it's important to and easier to create your own assignments. Um, because you can just grab your digital camera and mm -hmm. go out and create a story for yourself. Um, magazine editors love uh, self-sufficient people. They love self-starters. Um, and you, in your market, know that there's, if you recognize something as a story that might have national interest, do a portrait series, do a reportage story. And even if it doesn't have national interest, if the pictures are fabulous, they're now on your website. Mm -hmm. So you have to build your own, you have to shoot for yourself. Yeah. And if it is something that has national interest and you can get it in front of whomever, New York Times Sunday Magazine, for example, you stand a really, really good chance of getting it published. Right, and that and that is the, that's a key thing that um, I don't think uh, occurs to people naturally that I don't have to get paid or, or called up <laughs> and assigned. Okay, so you've done like a million dream jobs. What is your like, I would love to do this? I would love to, um, I'd love to go to the White House. I'd love to put up a seamless. I'd love to do a portrait of the president and then spend the day just doing reportage. I love the idea of photographing world leaders, but you know, Platon just did an amazing series of world leaders for The New Yorker. You're drawn to power. I'm drawn to um, success and to um, achievement, really. Yeah. You know, and it could be an author. You right. know, it could be um, a scientist. You know, that, somebody who is so devoted and focused in one area and has achieved, you know, Steve Jobs, um, yes. you know, stuff like that, uh, people like that. Those people, fascinating. Yeah, and the, and the, the idea there is there is a power there because how do you propel yourself into a position such as that? Which is partly why I love these talks. When we sat down and talked earlier, you know, when you asked me why we're doing this, talking to people like you who have obviously, when you talk about the four areas and what you've got to keep on and the, the stepping through, um, that's an extreme amount of dedication and responsibility it and is. focus and constant work. That's really true. It is. It's dedication, responsibility, and constant work. And not, you know, not to the detriment of the rest of your life. The bottom line is, for me, is balance. You know, there has to be some kind of balance. And maybe you're in balance here. Maybe you're in balance here. But... Um, Recognizing that there is a, the concept of balance and you should be <laughs> exactly. trying to. But again, to your detriment, if you are just um, 
you, you do need to step back and see the big picture. I, I like to say that you do need to have a macro and a micro view, not only of your set and of the room, but of... Um, your fucking life. Yeah, yeah, it's really, mm -hmm. it's really important. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. Tune in next time while we continue our super cool chat with Art Stryber. But in the meantime, say you are watching a behind the scenes for your favorite Stranded on an Enchanted Island TV series and you're lusting after all the silky smooth Steadicam shots. Their Steadicams cost like 60 grand, but the Merlin is exactly $59,200 less than that and offers those flowing movements you want. The Merlin is easy to set up and balance and is a perfect fit for your DSLR with a hefty lens. You can buy the Merlin at Adorama.com.